just five seconds and David will introduce it. Okay, welcome to the second talk in, in, this, in this online session where we have the great pleasure to hear from Sayatan something about one-shot bounds for the private classical capacity of a multiple access channel. So I'm very interested in, in hearing the talk. So please go ahead, Sayatan. Uh, thanks, David. So uh, hi, everyone. Whoever uh, is listening, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Sayatan, and this is joint work with Aditya Nima, who is currently in Nagoya University, and with Pranab, who is at EIFR Mumbai. So I'm going to be talking about the private, uh, private classical capacity or private classical communication over a quantum multiple access channel. We'll see what that means. So uh, at the very beginning, the problem, the most basic form of the problem is as follows. So you have two parties, Alice and Bob, as usual, and they have to communicate via a noisy quantum channel, which I denote by, by this N A to B. Is a, e, a is the input quantum system and B is the output quantum system. Okay, And these two guys have to communicate using this channel. And by that, what I mean is that Alice has a bunch of uh, message indices, uh, the numbers say from one to capital M, which I denote by this uh, box M notation. And Alice has to send some encoding of these messages through the noisy channel. And after that, Bob receives some quantum state in the system B. And he has to do some operation on, on B and produce a guess uh, for the message that was sent by Alice. And what we want is that the guess and the actual message that was sent, they should be uh, the same most of the time. Okay, so formally, what how this usually happens is like this. So there's a bunch of these these mess messages are there from one to uh, up to capital M, and let us take a generic message small m. Okay, uh, corresponding to this, uh, all all of these messages, uh, Alice has a code words, and th these code words code words were somehow generated. We don't need to know how right now. So I'll call them C of one, C of two, C of m, and so on. And furthermore. Uh, each code word is in its turn associated with a quantum state, which lives in the input space of this noisy channel. So I'll call these quantum states, these, these states are fixed. So there is a mapping from uh, these code words uh, to quantum states in, in, in the input Hilbert space. Okay. So I'll call, call them a row of C of one, a row of C of two, and, and so on. And all of them live in this input space A. Okay. So when Alice wants to send the message M, She'll just pass it through her encoder, which produces the code word C of M. And uh, looking at C of M, she will just pick up some quantum, this input quantum state, row of C of M, and send that state through the channel. Now, after the channel acts on this state, uh, what Bob sees is the state N of row of C of M on his system B. So this is what is produced at the end of all this business. And what Bob has to do is uh, do some operation on, 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 on the system B, okay? Maybe a measurement, maybe something is something else. Uh, and produce a guess M hat, but this M hat is a guess for the message that was sent. And what we require is that um, over the uh, private coin, so the encoder and decoder are private coin algorithms. They are allowed to toss their own private coins. So over the private coins of, of these en this encoder and decoder, the probability that uh, the guess is not equal to the original message that was sent should be small. And this condition is known as reliability. Okay. Now, this is, this is a very old problem. All of us know what, what it is. And uh, there are many famous theorems proving. So in the asymptotic IID setting, we know the HSW theorem says that as long as your number of messages is, is at most two to the n times the mutual information between sender and receiver, uh, such a such an encoding and decoding scheme exists, and in the one shot setting, uh, it was first proved by Renner and Wang, and an alternate proof using a sequential decoder was given by Sen. Okay, we are going to consider a generalization of this called the wiretap channel, where now uh, the output of the channel is actually a joint state on two systems. One is the system B, where B belongs to the legitimate receiver Bob. So Bob is the legit receiver. But there is a one other system E, which belongs to an eavesdropper, Eve. Okay, so our requirements are now increasing. The first requirement is that Bob again should be able to decode Alice's message correctly. But we also want that whatever message index was sent, Eve should not be able to tell what that was. So uh, basically, this thing they hide M, M from Eve. And more formally, what this means is that no matter what message index was sent 
the state that is induced on the system E belonging to E should be more or less independent of that index. If that happens, then Eve can get no informa in, in information from doing any arbitrary quantum operation on, on her system. Okay, so, so basically secrecy is maintained. So the way this is done is the following. It's a, it's a, this has a name, it's called obfuscation. So let, let's say that Alice wants to send some generic message small m. Now previously we were associating a, a single code word with every small m. Now I'm going to associate a whole block. So for small m, I have this whole block of code words, C of one comma m, C of two comma m up to C of capital K comma m. So what Alice does is she will choose an index uniformly at random from uh, the set of capital K uh, integer indices. So basically pick K from, uh, from box K UAR. And let us say, uh, the, 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 then uh, what is the code, code word that is produced? That is a C of small K comma m. Okay. Now, what is the input state that Alice produces when she does this? So this is a uniform of average over all co co code words, and hence it's also uniform average over all corresponding quantum states in the input, right? So we have uh, one over capital K, summation over small k, row of C of small k comma m. So this average state is what Alice produces as the encoding. We are interested in the state on Eve system. So let's, let's uh, one by one uh, trace our steps. So first of all, this whole thing is passed through the channel, uh, which maps uh, A to B E. And this produces the joint output on the B system, right? But then we don't really care about uh, what Bob is doing right now. We care about E system right now. So I'm just going to trace out the B system. So this whole operation is, uh, I'm going to denote as a, uh, the channel from A to E. And this is usually known as the complementary channel. Okay. And this state is what is produced on the Eve register, on the Eve system. The requirement is that for every message M, this average state should be close to, so some epsilon close in maybe one norm or some your favorite metric, should be close to some constant quantum state, let us say sigma, which is independent of the message index. Okay. And there is a theorem called the, called the covering lemma, which says that as long as this number, this block size capital K, is large enough that this indeed happens. Okay. Now the question is, uh, how large does the block size have to be? So the answer depends on which regime you're really working in. So if you allow many copies of many independent copies of the channel, then if log of k is greater than the mutual information between Alice and Eve, then we are good. And in one shot, we have a corresponding one shot quantity called the smooth max information between Alice and Eve. Um, so some of you might ask, okay, you have written mutual information, but what is this mutual information computed with respect to? So I'm just going to spend a few seconds on this, not too much. It's a little technical. The thing is, whenever we are designing a quantum communication protocol, we all start off from something called a control state. Okay. So what is a control state? So as you can see, there are, these C's are the code words and this X is a classical system belonging to Alice. Okay. So uh, this part of this control state is supposed to model uh, a distribution over the code words where, this, where, where the distribution is given by this P subscript C of C. Okay. And corresponding to every code word C, you have, you have a quantum state on the joint system B, which I denote by rho of B sub C. And this whole thing, this whole summation, this whole state is what we call the control state. Now it's important to understand that this is an aid. This is an aid in defining coding protocols and designing coding protocols. And our entropy quantities are also uh, defined with respect to this state, but it does not appear explicitly when you're actually doing the encoding and encoding and decoding. This is simply an aid, okay? I'm not going to uh, say much about this anymore, but just keep in mind that these, all these entropic quantities are computed with respect to this guy. Now, what is the overall scheme? What, what, what really happened? What really happened was that we took the old point to point uh, code, code book, the, the C11 to C, uh, uh, K, M, uh, sorry, C11 to CK, whatever, as, as many messages as you want. And we divided that whole code book into a bunch of blocks where each, blocks has, uh, each block has a capital K number of elements. And when Alice wants to send some message M, she will go into the corresponding block uh, pick a code word uniformly at random and send the corresponding quantum state through. What is 
the number of messages that you can send now well, clearly it has reduced from the point to point case right so the point to point case told you that you could send at most two to the n times mutual information number of messages but now you have broken up the code book into blocks so, and each block is of size two to the k where k has to be at least something like two to the n times mutual information between alice and eavesdropper so basically the number of messages you can send is this guy divided by this guy the total number of messages divided by block size that's it and your rate is log of that and then you divide by n this is the usual uh, shannon definition okay so the rate that you get is ix colon c minus ix colon so very standard stuff very easy till now okay. for our work we consider a generalization of this scenario the generalization is simply by adding multiple senders so instead of a single sender alice now we have two senders alice and bob who and with the additional requirement that these guys have to act independently they cannot co coordinate okay and you have uh, the everything else is pretty much the same so your legitimate receiver is charlie and your eavesdropper is still eve uh, and and that's it and what you really want is reliability so in this case reliability means that charlie should be able to decode both Alice and Bob's message with uh, with a low probability of error, and that whatever message pair Alice and Bob sent, that should be secret from from the eavesdropper. That that is what we call joint secrecy. So not only do we need just Alice and just Bob's message to be secret, we want them to be secret together. And this is a stronger requirement. Okay, especially because Alice and Bob are independent. So uh, I'm not going to say too much about reliability because it's been studied a lot, but it, that is still very much a hard problem. So in the asymptote ID setting, how? To, so, so so yeah. By the way, this this, this is what we call the uh, multiple access channel. Multiple access because many users can access it at the same time. It's called the MAC QMAC whatever. So reliability for the QMAC was proven by Winter first uh, in 2001, I think, or a little earlier maybe. And later on, uh, different proofs were given uh, by Sen, both in the asymptotic ID and in the one-shot setting. In fact, the one-shot uh, problem was open for a long time, uh, but it was solved in 2018. But we will not uh, dwell too much on this. What we are more, more interested in is the secrecy. Okay, so so let's look at a naive strategy of how we can guarantee joint secrecy. So the trick is still pretty much the same. That Alice and Bob, let's say Alice wants to send some message index M and Bob wants to send some message message index N. Each of these guys have associated with them a block, a block of code words. So Alice's code words are C1M to C capital KM, and Bob's block is B1N to B capital LN. Alice speaks uniformly at random, so does Bob, and they produce uh, these uh, uniformly at uh, random code words C small KM, B small LN. Okay. What is the input state? Again, we will re retrace our steps. So the input state. Notice that these, 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 two, these two choices are independent of each other, okay? So basically the input state is itself an average over tensors of these sort of states on the system A and the system B. So for each choice of code word, Alice produces an input state rho C of K comma M. Bob does the same thing with sigma B of L comma N, and then you take an average over uh, capital K and capital L, okay? So this is your total average input state. And then you pass it through the channel, trace out the Bob system, and you get this thing. This is pretty much the same as what we saw earlier in the point to point case. And what we want is that this guy, for some uh, bounds on K and L, this guy should be close to a constant state independent on, on each system, of course, which is independent of uh, the message indices M and N that, that are being sent. Now, what should the bounds on K and L, L look like? So if Alice and Bob were. were working together if they were doing all this all this together this would simply be another case of the point to point channel and then a bound of uh, like a lower bound of mutual information between alice bob together and the eavesdropper would be enough that we have already seen the rub is that they are not together they're actually independent in fact they're spatially separated so we would guess that we need more so independently uh, alice needs alice's uh, code block should be at least as large as i of x colony and Bob should be at least as large as I of Y colony, the logs of the sizes at least. Okay. And the full region, we call this the secrecy region. So the full secrecy region now looks like this. And if you draw this out on a, on, on, on a graph paper with log K as the X axis and log L as the Y axis, you will see that this is an inverted sort of pentagon 
okay with two sides in, at infinity so this is one side at infinity another side at infinity and there is this one um, dominant face which sort of coincides with this uh, uh, line which is x plus y equal to the sum rate so this what we call the sum rate this line okay the log k plus log l is equal to this this is that line this is this is not very hard to see what is the issue the issue that is that this is open nobody knows how to prove a theorem like this not in the one shot set setting not in the asymptotic iid setting and uh, we don't know how to prove such a theorem the, the reason is, there's a very good reason and that reason is something called the simultaneous smoothing conjecture so the point is that every time you try to prove something like this at some point invariably you will run into a step where you will have the control state you will have to take a perturbation of that control state and uh, you'll have to consider some appropriate marginals of, of that control state and when i say marginals i mean so uh, marginals on the xe system marginals on the ye system and the whole state on the xye system okay uh sorry where did it go yeah so the issue is that we don't know whether the same perturbation satisfies all three bounds at the same time and that is precisely the simultaneous smoothing conjecture we have nobody knows how to prove this yet and this is an outstanding open problem in qit so uh, we are up against a very uh, tough adversary here the question is that do we really need to prove the prove the full need the full might of the smoothing conjecture for our purposes we just want to send secret messages right and so we ask a far simpler question that okay maybe we cannot prove a secrecy region which looks like this whole pentagon but at least can i prove secrecy for single points on the plane so maybe let us say i consider this single point which i am indicating by blue where log k is at least i of x colon e and log l is at least i of y colon x e notice that this looks like this looks like the decoding scenario where it's as if uh, Al alice is decoded first and then using alice's message bob is decoded next but this is not that thing i mean this is just some ideological uh, similarity because of this similarity we call this a sequential decode uh, sequential covering lemma okay so uh, it turns out that indeed we can prove secrecy for single points like this for this corner point and correspondingly for the for this orange for the symmetric orange corner point where uh, uh, alice's rate has now alice's block size has increased to ix colon ye and bobs has reduced to iy colon e and notice that the sum rate is still i of x y colony that is just your usual chain rule okay so we can prove a lemma so this is our contribution we can prove prove a lemma where we can prove secrecy for uh, block sizes which lie here or here these two points the blue point or the orange point okay that is why we call it a sequential or a distributed covering lemma okay but what about we we wanted a whole region right so now we have two two of these points and obviously everything above them so everything above uh, in these rectangles above these two points which i have indicated by the green crosses but what about things in on this line segment which is in between these two corner points so in the asymptotic iid this is easy just do a time sharing argument and you are done so it turns out that just proving secrecy for only two points is enough in 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 the asymptotic iid setting okay and we can get a full secrecy region which which looks like this great we did not need uh, we did not go up against simultaneous smoothing yet we managed to do what we wanted to do one shot things are much harder because you can you 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 don't have time sharing anymore so definitely you have the two rectangles but can you do more and we show that yes indeed you can do more by we have other techniques up, up our sleeve and we actually show that okay maybe not a pentagon but definitely we can show secrecy for a region where the this boundary where this dominant phase boundary is actually warped like this okay and uh, this is another one of our results in the one shot setting and after all this is done so we have done secrecy now let's get back to the original question what does the actual achievable region look like what is the re rate region look like and asymptotic iid everything is absolutely ideal so it looks like the pentagon that you would expect but with the with the rates reduced uh, ap appropriately by the by the block sizes okay so you have one corner point where the block sizes are reducing this rate and similarly for the other guy and it's pretty much a pentagon uh things are a little more complicated in the one shot setting 
because of several technical reasons and some uh, pathological cases that might arise. So we might get a region where one part of the dominant phase is just missing. So this is this this uh, red thing. Okay, it's just moth eaten. But uh, these these happen because of pathological cases that may arise. But definitely this is much larger than just the trivial union of two rectangles that we would get originally. So that is uh, pretty much all I had to say. Uh, anyone who is listening, thank you. And thank you for inviting me to QIP. I would be happy to take questions in the Q&A session. Thanks. Cool. Thanks a lot for the, for the very clear talk. And congratulations on the result. So, um, okay, we have four minutes, but there was no question in the, in the chat that we need to ask or to discuss immediately. So I, I suggest we postpone the questions sure. to the Q and A, to the Q and A answer session, and therefore we, we are done here. So I thank you again for the for the talk, thank and then see you later in the Q and A session. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you for Thanks. having me. Bye.